we have made it halfway through our very first day of Europe League in 2024. And our third game is between none other than G2 and Fnatic. Now, talking about that latter one, the organization coming into Europe, of course, from APAC, but we're super happy to have Fnatic in Europe. Yeah, so happy. I think, you know, the fact that the org is here in Europe, they've been in Japan and APAC a long time. We've wanted them here, we've got them here, and they're here now. And the one thing, and we're treated it to it on play day one, the one thing that these two orcs do better than anybody else is banter each other in other esports. So I'm so happy for that. If we move through to the Fnatic team, you can obviously see that it is the core of the old Koi slash Rogue roster that represented 2023. However, they have added in Tyrant and Jegs. Now, for me, this feels like much more of a complete team than what they previously had. If you looked at the roster they put out this time 12 months ago, they played three support players, a lurker, and then a beta that was playing in an aggressive role. Now, it feels like they've got two solid frontline players with Jegs and Jigsaw. They've got a link player with Tyrant, and then they've got a solid backline, obviously with Leon and Deepak. Yeah, and I think they still have a lot of potential to develop even further. Tyrant has been in Eminem a long time, and he has had incredible stats. But I think that team was quite heavily friendship-based, which means that all of these mistakes, because I think that Tyrant made quite a few individual mistakes. Now he's away from that sort of environment, and he's in a, what I would say, more of a developmental friendly environment, because now he has pressure from him, yeah. from people that might not be as buddy-buddy with him, as well as Seth as their coach. I worked with him a long time ago, and I know the standard he keeps his players to. So I think that we have massive amount of development potential in this team, and Jags have just as much as Tyrant, if anything. I think that point specifically on Tyrant is, if you go back to SI2023, he was like the fourth-rated player at SI2023. And we're saying he has such a higher yeah. ceiling that he's nowhere close to. He's still got a huge potential. The Fnatic know this as well. The team, the player, they all know this and they're going to try and extract that out of him. I think the most important thing to do for Fnatic right now is to forget about last year because it really wasn't all that good for them. But what I'm hearing right now, it seems that the vibes of the team should be a lot better. And, you know, thinking back about that rogue uh, core at Berlin, that was the most important thing for them. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to completely, completely write off last year as if it didn't matter whatsoever. It's all about the new Fnatic now. It's new Fnatic, new stability. And now that excuse doesn't matter anymore. That last year went bad. You have everything in your hands. They're happy now. Yeah, they're happy. They have everything in their own hands. New Fnatic versus the same old G2. A roster that we've seen for a little while now as together as a roster as they currently are. And of course, they couldn't defend their SI title, unfortunately, in Sao Paulo. But still, look at the previous track record, Fabi. That's been a pretty good time for them. Yeah, I mean, it's G2. They're always expected to be up there. And I think that even though they end up fourth in SI, that's kind of a failure because you're there to defend your hammer. So maybe they didn't reach as far as they wanted to or what my expectations on them were because I always expect G2 to win every single event. That's just how it's always going to be. But then they also struggled a little bit during Malta. They, they went up against BDS, who in my eyes kind of dismantled them completely in two games. So I don't know really what G2 were going to get here because they also know that they took a break after that as well. So. I don't really know what G2 team is showing up today. I mean, they're very talented players. I mean, come on, a year ago they won SI, right? So it's not like they're far behind. This is going to be a very, very even matchup. They have a secret weapon up their sleeve, Anne, though. They have a secret weapon. That is Doki. It's not even a secret weapon. Yeah, We've known about him weapon. for literal years now. Now, the reason that I wanted to highlight Doki here, you're seeing his stats throughout the entirety of 2023. So stage one, 2023, all the way to the end of Six Invitational. Now, he has maintained a 1.31 KD. Now, Fabian, there's a little French player that I think you would say is the best mechanical player in the world. I, I don't know. This is an argument, right? Because Shaiko, Shaiko would be the one that everybody in the league points towards. Okay, so Shaiko, over about 300, I think it's 320 rounds, has a 1.31 KD. Doki has that same key KD, but in double the amount of rounds. This guy has been so consistent throughout the whole 12 months. Yeah. He is like G2's, he's not even the secret weapon, he's just the in-your-face weapon. And on top of that, that team has performed a lot better at tournaments than BDS have, right? They, they At least they went to SI, and they came fourth as well. So it's like overall, the team around him has also been playing stronger, which I think that you can benefit when everybody is just synced up together. Did I see that right in that graphic, Fresh? 24% of yeah. the rounds that he's playing, he's getting a multi-kill? Yeah. That is absurd. Two kills or more in a quarter of the rounds. One in every four rounds, he's getting a 2k or more. That's... And, and, and the funniest part is, this all comes back from... Like, so when I work with him, right, there was a lot of inconsistency. He's found a girlfriend and she's made him into a superpower. And I'm not girlfriend even kidding. <laughs> Sandra has literally made him into a super player. Because somehow, she's found the consistency in him 
I don't know how, whatever you've done. And, and that's always thank what you, he was like. He was always trying to overreach, right? And yeah. he's now like, stop doing that. He's just playing his game. Yeah. And excelling. Because one game he would be up in the clouds, and then one game he would be invisible. And now he's constantly in the clouds. And yeah, something has happened. And I, that's the only thing I can see. In is the clouds in real life, in the clouds. Either it's his girlfriend, there's Ramalio, their new coach. It could be either one. <laughs> we got to see whether the girlfriend buff's going to help them uh, win out this specific best of one as well. And we'll have a look at what map we are going to because a best of one will lead us to bank is the final decision and Fnatic will have to start out on attack. Yeah, so I think obviously Fnatic have chose this. They have the choice of Clubhouse or bank. Now, kind of curious because Clubhouse was a permaban for G2 for a long time that they brought in to the six Invitational and played very well on. So I can see why Fnatic would want to go to bank. However, we've not seen Fnatic for a very, very long time, obviously, not six months since we've seen them. And during 2023, well, they lost everything. So, of course, they've got a losing record on bank in 2023. For G2, it's a map they played kind of intermittently throughout the Six Invitational, and they had fairly good results on it. I think when I think about both of these calls over a long term, they were both very, very good bank yeah. teams. You know, I remember Rogue against G2 on bank back in 2022. It's a map they've commonly played against each other. Yeah, I think it weighs in all the favor here in Fnatic's side because obviously they had new players, so they had to rework everything. G2 haven't had the luxury of having that time to actually do any rework. So every advantage, no matter what map it would have been on, I think Fnatic has the advantage in the map. And now it's just go on the server and shut G2 down. Can they shut down that individual firepower that G2 have? Now that's going to be a difficult one, but I would quite like to hear a prediction for this best of one. Do we keep it as is, where I'm always shilling Fnatic, <laughs> Rogue slash Fnatic, and you're always shilling G2? That's what yep. I was going to Okay, it's going to be Fnatic for me. Yeah, it's G2 for me. 7-0. Seven, 7-0. Zero. Seven, zero. Okay, I was, that was my follow-up question. Was it going to be a dominant game or a close one? I think this is going to be a lot closer than people will expect. I think G2, on the balance of it, are the favourites, should win it. But there's something about Fnatic, just having that balance and the vibes back, where I've got a little bit of belief in them. Yeah, 7-0 seven, G2. Thank you. 7-0 G2. I mean, of course, we're going to have to see what is going to happen in this specific matchup. But we've talked a lot about G2 and the star players on that side. When we talk about Fnatic, we've had those new additions to the roster, which is the main attention point of this roster at the moment. Is that Tyrant? Is it Jegs? Who is it? I think, you know, obviously it'll be Jigsaw and, and Jegs as the, as the front two. You would imagine Jigsaw should be that pure out-and-out -out entry, with Jegs being the second entry. I think Jegs is such an underrated pickup. I yep. think we both agree on this, is that we have no idea why Wild let him go. And at the end of last season, sense. No. it makes no logical sense to us as to why they would let him go. Fnatic, as soon as they could, picked him up. Like, he's been with this roster a while. Tyrant obviously was, you know, going to go to Six Invitational with another team, whatever. Only became available recently, because Fnatic were playing with Slebin throughout all of the Tier 3 comp yep. competitions. When a player like Tyrant becomes available, they've got to go for him. And I think that's what makes that front three for me, if they can lock it and play to the strengths, will be very, very strong. Yeah, and I think you mentioned Jigsaw for a very short time. I think that the previous roster that they had, his role within that roster didn't make too much sense. Like the, the roster around him, him, he himself is fine. But the other players around him yeah. didn't really play into where they could enable him. Yeah. And now we have that balance. Agreed. So, we're talking about the two new pickups. Jigsaw is going to be reactivated and see to the APAC player he used to be, and I think he can step up massively. And then most people are talking about APAC as one of the absolute best yeah. flex support players in the world. And then we have Leon, who is also a super experienced player. And I think those guys in the back line will feel that they will be able to just play the back line. Yeah. Because they'll trust their front line. It's very clear throughout the last two stages last year that they didn't really trust their front line players and had to change their game accordingly. If they now trust them, they, those two can go back to being kind of a, a major winning backline yeah. that we haven't seen for 18 months. Frontline makes less mistakes, which means backline is calmer and tries less aggressive plays to support them, which leads to less mistakes. Yes. It's that well-rounded, complete roster yes. that you mentioned earlier. But then on the side of G2, you mentioned as well, it really depends on what kind of G2 yeah. you'll be seeing on the day. I mean, if you're expecting a 7-0, then we're going to have to see a really good G2 today. You know, Alema only shuts downs against Brazilians, so now he's not playing them, so it will be all right, I think. Uh, no, it, it, it really depends, because some days we'll have a G2 that really looks really, really strong theoretically on top of the individual performance, but they have this individual performance to back it up when their theory fails. So what team shows up today? I think that they have had time to reset. They know what they're fighting for, and it's also kind of, all right, we want to shut down Fnatic's return here, right? We want to shut down Fnatic in their first game in EUL. It, it feels good, especially when it's org to org the way it is. You talked about the shutdown against Brazilians, but we all watched Malta. We all saw the shutdown against French. So oh, no. English. <laughs> the, the, the new super team, we saw that shutdown. Who did G2 play next is the new super team. They play BDS tomorrow. In my mind, I'm kind of wondering, well, they got spanked by BDS the last game they played. They know they play them next. Do they maybe already have one eye on that game? 
And are they fully focused on the Fnatic game? You would assume, based on the fact that they are the professionals and previous world champions, they would be. But I do think for Fnatic, this is a great time to be playing G2. Oh, for sure, for sure. They are definitely prepared for both games because they have analysts and staff that are good enough to prepare more than one day in advance. Yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about the players. Yeah. Have they already got one eye on the next? It, it could very well be like that because knowing the players very close, they have a tendency to maybe move away a little bit too early or maybe thinking about something else that they shouldn't be thinking about once they actually have something important coming up. Well, first of all, they need to beat Fnatic. Will they be able to do it? And of course, a question as well is like, we saw G2 quite recently, but then for Fnatic, we haven't really seen them in action in official matches for a little while. That's obviously yeah. going to play if... Um... And, and we've never seen this five. Obviously, we saw them play and try and qualify for Malta and Southbridge. Didn't really happen, I'll be honest. Did look a little bit wavy. It was in that transition period. And obviously, they were playing with seven. With this five, we've never seen them. So it's kind of hard to know what to expect, apart from the fact that we've seen this call last year. We are ready for this game. The game was ready as well, and we should have our casters ready with us too. Ace and Des, welcome back. I am very curious. How is the excitement level for this game? It's the one of the day, isn't it? You know, Fresh touched on it at the very start of this desk. Like G2 versus Fnatic transcends any individual esport. It is the showdown for European um, esports orgs basically around the world. I'm really excited to see it come to it. It's just a big question of can Fnatic really do it over G2 though, Tim? Yeah, I mean, as you've said, we could be looking back on this in five, six weeks' time thinking that was one of the games of the stage and we've had it on play day one. We've been ruined with that. But yeah, you know, can, can Fnatic do it? It's going to be tough. They've got, um, you know, players to bed in. There's also, if you're looking for a reason why somebody won't win this, I think it's easier to find those reasons for the Fnatic roster than it is for G2 at the minute. But it's a roster rammed with talent. So they've got every chance of getting a win here. I think it's going to be close. Well, the good news is that the game is ready, so we'll leave it to you for Fnatic versus G2. Thank you very much, Anne. What a desk. This, what, a, what a desk. What a game this is turning into. What a desk as well. You guys are doing a wonderful job. But what a game this is going to turn into. As I said, I'm probably even more excited about the org level competition than Strictly Players, I think, Tim. But you look back, as they said, a reforged Rogue slash Koi roster here. A couple of upgrades in their view that really helped take this team to new levels. Coming up against, sure, a team that isn't the standing world champion, but our previous world champions. That cannot be ignored. And this is going to be an absolutely riveting affair. I really hope G2 are watching the break content that we have because Ian, 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 Leon told us exactly where he puts his drone. It's right there at the back of sight, Tim. So they're be watching out for that one. Let's get into this then. It's going to be Bank. It's going to be G2. It's going to be Fnatic. It's going to be a matchup that we've all been waiting for. I don't think just today, but since Fnatic announced their arrival in EU, we knew the matchup was on. And it's been an exciting wait ever since for this one. We're going to have Fnatic starting things off on the attack. The bands are going to start coming through. And we will see who G2 choose to take out of the mix to begin with. Indeed, we'll find out as we step in. Wonder if we'll see a Monty band coming away again, looking at Alamau, one of the players that likes employing the operator. It'll be on Fnatic to take that one off the board, if anything. It still sounds weird talking about Fnatic in European Siege. Every time I say the name, I'm just like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> Capital taken off the board by G2, though. It, one of them really interesting operators that actually a few teams um, offered the thought of just before SI saying, it, actually, he is one of the stronger ones in the game. And for the longest time, I've loved it. You know, hard breach gadget, two smokes, two fire brings a hell of a lot and also being a three speed at the same time definitely not an operator to turn your nose up at so not wholly surprised to see it band away the next two though are going to be that ying and the soul is taken offline no big surprises there tim no not at all um and yeah i'd agree with uh what, what you're saying about capito there i used to have him sort of marked down as as probably the most self-sufficient or one of the most self-sufficient operators in the game. Um, you know, still very much up there. A lot of variety in that utility can do an awful lot for himself. I'd maybe say that Buck has just surpassed him a little bit sometimes in my mind. He doesn't have the smokes, but he can bring a gun six, hard breach, soft breach. Um, you know, he, he brings an awful lot to the table. So um, we are going to see the Buck picked up. Not too much of a surprise. Good pick rate at the minute, you know, likely because of that ability, um, you know, to open hatches, get 
get a little hole in a wall if you need to, floors, ceilings, soft surfaces, so much value being brought along by Buck. But um, we will be getting into things then. It's going to be round one. It's going to be G2 versus Fnatic. And this already could be one of the classic matchups. This could be the real start of a, a years-long EUL rivalry. You know, we look at G2 BDS. We look at these teams that have gone up against each other in EUL over the years. And I just look at this one and think, is this going to be the start of another? Absolutely. Well, let's get underway. Look straight away at G2's combo team. You always get two varieties or two flavors for defending down here in the basement. It could turn into a very roam heavy one where you have far more speedy operators willing to get out and about around the map, or you really try and dig in deep and just run the clock down. And actually, we saw this kind of stuff playing out in the game between, I want to say it was Scars and Kino Trope over in Japan, a very similar sort of story, where you saw teams wasting about 60 seconds of the clock. It was terrifying to deal with. And here, G2 have really gone for that same approach. Two C4s on side, Evil Eyes, Goyo Canisters, Smoke, Tuberau. They're just throwing the literal kitchen sink at them. It's like trying to break into a fortress on this downstairs site. So Fnatic, I think, have got to move at quite a bit of pace here if they want to get their way through and to be fair tyrant playing on this brava could prove to be one of those helping heroes if he can find the evil eyes yeah that carriage bulletproof um is a big loss for g2 there because it puts in the back of the mind that we need to keep an eye on that area yep you always have to catch the you know check the cam and everything but there's going to be a bit of noise there in somebody dealing with it they've now had to take it out themselves because it was captured by that clutch drone so that's really good play from fanatic there it just gives them maybe another avenue or it maybe takes a g2 player away from site because now somebody has to sort of hard hold it they have to go and stand in there potentially to be confident that nobody's pushing through garage and virtually being wary here that he might find himself exposed if that hatch gets opened up above but now it's not being opened up in fact i think there might be even been late electrification come on through because that kind of electro claw is still there still completely fully electrified off which means virtue can hold here that little bit longer don't oh, forget yeah. what i said by the way three smokes c4s evil eyes tuber out everything gives them so much time to still waste here when we get down to that last 60 seconds or so i'd wager if there's 45 seconds left on the clock and they haven't cleared everything out they are going to be in a spot of hot bother but poor benja has no idea that that camera has been hacked away above him yeah, Virtue's going to pick up the opener on to Leon Gids. They've nothing really to deal with this electrification on the hatch, and it's causing them a huge problem at the minute. If you want to force somebody out of service, you open the hatch because they have to make a choice then. Do they basically give their life away, or do they get back to site? And most times, people will leave and get back to site, but Virtue, he's just going to be able to keep playing there in blue. So, Fnatic, they need to be looking elsewhere here, maybe, and thinking, you know what? We're not going to get down into servers confidently in control in as much time as we need. We're going to have to use the other hatches and maybe go go for a drop. Not much time to play with here as well. They have to move soon. Oh, my shotgun. Going, cover me. Benja, he makes it too. Tyrant with Jex following in just behind. As the 10 side screens come out, going to achieve absolutely nothing. A near flawless round coming out for G2, if not for that little kill being snagged away at the end. Yep, good start for G2, just locking down that first round. Very, very solid. Um, for me, it was just that little bit of lack of preparation on the side of Fnatic, not recognizing that there was a Kaid on board, or if they did spot him with the drones, not bringing along anything to deal with it. Obviously, no soft surfaces around that server hatch, for example. So being able to clear an electrical, very, very difficult. Um, and it just allowed Virtue to stay in position. They had to move away and attack from elsewhere, dropping hatches. G2, again, had sort of read into that and we're like yep yeah, you're not going to get a server now we know that so we know where you're coming from um, really well played from G2 excellent first round and it's 1-0 they're very convincing to start things off and now as that drop of Benja dies there maybe it's a different conversation as they had so much information on what was going on towards the backside of this downstairs site here and getting those kills, no ability to capitalize and really break the back backbone of G2. Up we go then, tip to the other side of the map, straight up to the top floor, we're going to head. And it's going to be a similar sort of story here. I'm looking in towards the castle. I'm looking in towards Mira. I'm looking in towards the Zami. Three operators that Ubisoft described as their architects. Changing the way that sites often get played, changing how sight lines are presented, obviously opening up some very good one-way angles or one-way lines of sight that you get as the Mira. What is again really frustrate Fnatic here unless they can find a way to push on through and really interestingly we saw a ban of zero um the other day in japan and i said now i think back to it the only team i can think of that really used to well not really used to there are a few teams that did but one of the teams that were most prominent in playing zero on this map was oats old school road you saw a lot coming of that coming out of leon and so with it being available here unsurprisingly they still want to try and make use of it even in the current meta
Yeah, it's not surprised. I mean, you look at the, the power of an operator like Valkyrie, you know, up until recently, up until sort of Solus's army Fenrir, um, you know, Valkyrie was attracting a very high ban rate because of the value of that That's intel to the defenders. Mm. You know, Zero is basically doing the same thing on the other side, except he's got four cams rather than three. Um, Jigsaw is going to find a beautiful opener there onto Uno, so that gives Fnatic um, a decent start here. They've got the wall at the top square opened up and it's paid dividends. Leon manages to find Benja. Five versus three and Fnatic, good position of advantage here. Tyrant just trying to push round onto Spiral Stairs. Alamar it is though, but manages to find the kill for G2 onto Leon. Could be on a feedback. <laughs> I mean, it's one way of getting a window barricade opened up. Uh, yeah, it's open. That's what counts, I guess. A 4v3 for Fnatic with half the round still to play here. Going quite good, to be fair. Got that entry kill, have otherwise kept themselves pretty much ahead of the scoring. Still, it's not how you convert it from this point. And Jigsaw is in, finds a second. Doki being removed. And, you know, although this team had a bit of time, still trying to... I've just realized, by the way, why has he got FPC as his tag in his name? Man clearly hit a typo. Clearly, it's like FPC. It's next to the key, you know. It's next it's, to the it's, correct it's key, Vatic, isn't it? <laughs> Never mind. Jigsaw certainly yeah. not uh, misclicking in the server so far. He's been finding Hedge. Jegs is going to take down Alamai whilst Virtue finds Tyrant. Leaves us in a one versus three for Virtue on the KE. Going to be a tough one for him here. We've got Tyrant Fnatic just using that utility that G2 put out there. Deployable yeah, shield being right. used on the reverse, as you can see against them. Plant does go down along the way. And now, not only is Virtue staring down the barrel of a one versus three, he's also going against the clock as well. Just taking long range pot shots, but unable to find anybody. Got about 23 seconds left to find these kills if he still wants time to be able to deactivate that diffuser, but it's looking less and less likely. He sees one in stock. Can't quite get the kill, and Jegs pops back up and punishes Virtue. Yeah, big round there for both Jegs and Jigsaw to really get themselves a couple picks up in the round to get things over the line and much better recovery coming out of Fnatic in that round as well. Admittedly, probably one that you look at and say a much more open site, much more of the map gets called into play there as well. Where they really struggled in round one was the fact that everything was so locked down on the other side. Benja being, of course, the absolute demon of elevators. But I think in this round being given a little bit more freedom to play and getting the result from it. Right, well... Exactly the start that we wanted, I think. Just a little bit of a uh, shared spoils. They managed to pick up around a piece. And that just gives us a little nod towards how close this game might be as we continue going forward. Um, I'll be interested to see whether G2 choose to pick up that top floor site again or whether it's going to be move on and try one of the mid floors because that was fairly routine in terms of attacks for Fnatic there. They got the square wall open very quickly. They dominated a lot of the map um, and you didn't really feel like G2 were too competitive in that round. Riddles, by the way, I saw a fan out from Fresh. A shout out to him as always. FPC was actually the name of their uh, tag while they were an old us, all between being on Rogue and Rogue being on Fnatic. So, maybe not quite a typo. <laughs> More holding on to the old days, at least for the couple of weeks in which they were all us between those two orgs. I imagine they'll, uh, they'll be told, yeah, can we fix that tomorrow, please, mate? That was one, thank you. Right then, Leon on the windows again. Managed to get a kill from there last time after opening up the wall. But as I suggested, G2 this time choosing not to go back to the top floor. They are instead on that mid floor and just going to be um, looking to force Fnatic to take top floor control, burn a bit of time uh, before they can start thinking about getting down to site itself. We've got Tyrant doing real work on these clutch drones throughout. He's not quite going to get the Valt Camp, but... It's going to be Deepak who manages to pick up Alamo for an even bigger start. Yeah, big fun on the downstairs as well here. So now they can focus on the upstairs knowing you're not about to get yourself backstabbed from below. But stuff to find a second as well. Really starting to build a bit of momentum here, Fnatic, across these last two rounds. Again, when things have been more opened up, we've seen them thriving definitely more than we did down in the basement. The difficulty being that basement site is exactly where we return to in the next round. At least I'll be shocked if G2 opt not to go there after that two round cooldown before they can go back to playing it again. Just going to have that utility clearance continuing. Doki up on the top floor above site. It's holding on pretty well here. We're a minute and a half into the round. Um, still hasn't been moved. Not managed to pick up any kills in the first couple of rounds, but the end of the world for him. He's in a tricky position now for the attackers to move him on. And this time keeps on ticking by with 
Fnatic still not in control with that top floor. Blessing is that Fnatic have got two players up here, like two on square watching and waiting for him to make his move. They know that he can't drop through the hatch. They can afford to just sit and wait a little bit here. I hope Jags is aware of what's going on. He's got to know he's going to get swung onto, and sure enough, that to swing and Doki gets the kill. Turns out they weren't aware of him. I really thought with two players on square, they were just waiting for Doki to make his move to then pick him off. And Jigsaw, he's going to do just that. But with the numbers of advantages they've had, they've kept it at a 4 v 2 Benja, though, he's on hitting some shots today, Tim. That's for sure. Almost gets the second, but Deepex just a little bit better. Three versus one. Virtue, yet again, with it all to do against three players on the side of Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic playing really well in pairs there. Every time somebody goes in, there's another one challenge challenging from somewhere else and a number of times they've left G2 in kind of no win situations really. G2 have done well along the way. Doki manages to pick one up before he dies. Benja picks one up before he dies. So it's not the end of the world but what it does mean is that Fnatic are just wearing them down. They had that man advantage. Five versus four so if every time they lost somebody they traded it out, they win the round. It's as simple as that. They'll win on sheer numbers alone. As it was, a good win for Fnatic. G2 a little bit of a problem now on the defensive bank they've lost top floor they've lost open they've only won in basement that then screams of a two four half for them and that might not be enough when you get fanatic on the defense uh, I mean, like I say, I'm, I'm basically guaranteed they're going back down into the basement here as well they'd be so silly not to given the success that they've seen down there so far a few replays from that last round there, mind you. Again, Doki, I really thought they knew where he was and they just had two players sat holding him ready for when he did try and push forward but almost paid the price for it Sure enough, Tim. Oh, it looks that we are stepping down, right? Right? I can't see the sight. We should be the sight. Thank God, we are. <laughs> we are indeed down in the basement. Thank you very much, observers. Similar sort of setup then, at least from the defensive side. Mira's being brought along. The key thing to really notice is the... In fact, they didn't bring Mira back in round one, of course. It was things like the Goyo, the Smoke, the Tuberau, the Evil Eyes. So a bit of a switch up, actually, in what they are playing. I eat either. Exactly, but this screams to me that they want to be far more mobile. Doki, I was going to say, Legion is a natural candidate for that. Valkyrie, the same. Mozzie, the same. Three players looking to get busy around the map here, I'd imagine, and look to slow Fnatic down. Yeah, the, the reason that I, I pick out the not having the Cade was last time, that was a big part of them actually winning the round. They kept that yeah. server hatch closed, and they were able to keep hold of it. Virtue just wouldn't allow anybody in there, and it left Fnatic to drop hatches. This time, that's not the case. Leon's in there already. He's going to take that ground potentially and so G2 have got to trade that like you say they've brought in more mobility and more uh, positioning around the map and they don't have the Kaid so they've given up server but they've got to trade it for kills elsewhere in the map if they just end up dropping back and they've given Fnatic server in the meantime as well then it might not have been the best switch up if they find the kills and they get the man advantage then perfect Oh, I must surely know. Of course, Alamar on the smoke is playing upstairs as well. Of course he is. Why wouldn't he be? So that's what? Four players out on the roam? That's bonkers. Yeah, four players not on site right now for the side of G2. That's a lot for Fnatic to work through. And again, looking back at the previous couple of rounds, this is actually where Fnatic have found quite a lot of success. It's more of these open gunfights, not having to work their way through what feels like a, a fortress of a setup. Alamal drops through one, has the ability to get to the second as well, but for now at least more looking to challenge back onto the doorway. Right sort of idea, but it will just keep on asking questions of Fnatic until they can figure a way through. Yeah, for now, all Fnatic really want is control of, of top square and kitchen, essentially. If they can get that locked down so they don't have to worry about that server hatch, they'll start playing into server, looking to open up the wall and potentially get a plant down, but they've got a lot of work before they can do that. As you rightly say, Alamal's dropped away, but he is still present. They can't ignore him. Who knows? Thinking about getting that nitro out, but it's too soon yet. There's Whoa. the kill, or at least one that they need. A Deepak goes in and finds Benja. That's likely forced Alamo back, given how low health he is, and given that the push is starting to mount inside a server. The call will have come. We need the smart canisters down here. So this is really good from Fnatic. And like I say, G2 haven't found those kills out in the map that they were trading something like the Kaid to try and get. So it's not working out as well as round one for them. I mean, Doki's on the hunt here as well. Oh, I think there's well. a little bit more of the soft wall destroyed that have found his man, but not to be. Leon into a second as well. A 5v3 temporarily until Uno starts fighting back. Two kills for himself, but Leon has found himself in the middle of sight here and slicing him up like cheese. Tim got himself a kill down to a three versus two and Virtue, the day angel of death from above, gets rid of one more. Doki moving his way up though, but they've got no idea where Doki is. There's 10 seconds to go. He drops, they see his feet, and they're going to find their man for now. Make it three in a row and G2 
They've got to start asking questions, Tim, because this play of getting out around the map and trying to contend with the side of Fnatic, it's all going wrong. Yeah, it was a little bit of a chaotic round there. Fnatic did a great job on the clearance. They got the kill onto Benja. They forced Alamo back and took 80% of his health. Did a great job. But then they allowed Virtue and Dorky back on the flank and it sort of completely flipped on its head and they had sight and were worrying about the hatches themselves rather than vice versa. But Fnatic, they do well. They still get the job done. They had one above. They were able to close it out, uh, get the job done. But yeah, so for me, like I say, G2 there, they had this strategy in round one that you feel like might have actually worked again there. Virtue on blue stairs and server, Kaid off the hatch. They still cool. didn't, Fnatic didn't bring anything along to deal with that hatch necessarily. They had the Twitch drawn, but it, you know, it's things that you can deal with. Um, but they traded that out. They went for the heavier roam and it just didn't pay off for them. Fnatic read into it really, really well and got that dealt with. So Fnatic 3-1 here and starting to mm -hmm. run away with things Thank a little bit. Insertion. I love how invested Leon is in his new team that he's even got the orange backlights Five going on in the room and everything. It looks like he's got a full-on Fnatic studio on the go. The only thing he's missing is a, yeah, is a neon logo on the battle behind him, but you never know. It's time Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> That's it. If he wins today, he'll be getting straight out there to splash on one of those bad boys. So, G2, let's see if they can get any kind of odds going back their way. I think if you were to end the, in the half of three and three, you wouldn't feel too bad about it. Bank's one of those maps that we do see quite a bit of attacking success on, but I'm just a little bit wary that with how the last three rounds have gone, but now they can't really showing any signs of slowing down. No, not at all. Um, Alamo does manage to oh, pick up and walk. Oh, he's behind him. I've just heard that. <laughs> he's, he's just, just told me. in our ears. Yeah, impressive stuff. You are. Oh, yeah, no, he, he does. He does. Committed. He's on the player cam. Oh, he's fantastic. He's looking at it. He's so committed. I love it. Thank you, Easy. Looking almost as good as that opening kill for G2. Alamo picking up Tyrant um, and getting them off to the start that they needed um, rather than them fighting on the back foot each time. So it looks like G2 have started to make those adaptations. But similar from Fnatic here, Leon's got up onto the rappel. He's opened that wall into square and he's given the long, long angle to Jigsaw. So G2 need to be very careful when moving around this site now. That was being shooting. They're trying to impact it out by the looks of it over the top, but just narrowly missing it out, unfortunately. Not quite going to get away with it. So for now, they've got the right idea. One down on the outside. The second one being finished off in the second two. It's looking good. Almost managed to find himself in a spot to be able to do something here, but G2 finally have found the battle they need him to get around closed out. It feels like Jigsaw with five players to cut through. And I don't know about you, but going through a good number of world champions doesn't sound like the easiest thing to do. Who know? Going to find that final kill. Flawless round it is for G2, bringing us to 3-2 in favour of Fnatic still. But G2 just managing to pause the bit of momentum that Fnatic were building. And as I said, this one, it's going to be close. It's going to be toe-to-toe -to -toe all the way through, I think. It's going to be very difficult for either of these to completely Beautiful. lock the other one out. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Leon's uh, set up looking fantastic there. It looks like he's going to commit, like, I don't know, some kind of, like, a ritual, just, like, sacrifice something, I don't know. <laughs> I think he's trying to sacrifice G2, if anything. <laughs> he's done a pretty good job so far as well. Well, then, let's see if Fnatic can finish this half off um, in the sort of fervor that they've been able to play through it so far. Uh, they're going to be looking for a 4-2 split, but G2 certainly seemed to wake up in that last round. I think the site suited them. Um, obviously, the Rome hadn't gone that well previously. Fnatic's intel game was good, and they got in, they challenged, they left them in difficult positions and forced them back to site, whereas G2 didn't have to worry about that on the top floor. They were able to just play up there completely and get the round won. This now is an important important round. This is the one where they've got to do it a little bit differently. They've got to have that extension to top to floor. Fnatic dealt with it really well last time. As I said, when they were attacking open, every time they lost somebody, there was a trade there. There was another kill coming in. They were putting G2 in lose-lose situations. Let's see if they can do the same again or whether G2 can cause more of a problem. You can hope more of a problem. Again, that 3-3 three, three split, I think both teams will walk away relatively well. That's a lie. But I think I imagine having been up three and one will be kicking themselves for losing two defensive rounds or two attacking rounds in a row, given the role that they've been on in the ones prior to it. The drone up here as well spots out everything. Benja, fully exposed. Poor lad's been sat on cams pretty much the entirety of this half. I think back to when they were defending in the basement and the Brava hacked out the default cam and he was just sat there completely unaware as to what was going on. They see everything, they know where he is, but can they capitalize? That's what always becomes the big question. Just because you can see someone doesn't mean you have an easy or safe path in to get rid of them.
Yeah, as I said, you know, just coming into this round, uh, Fnatic and the Intel game had been very good. They've got 10 drones still on the board. That's going to be nine. Um, but they're just feeding so much information back in. They haven't, like you say, there's been able to capitalize on it yet, but they've got a very good picture of what's going on ahead and around them. The question is now, how much can they do with it? Jags, he's going to start moving inside of the map. He's looking at top square, knows that there's potentially somebody in CEO and that there's a challenge to be made. Raisin. They're hunting. Trying to hope they can catch him, but at this point, he is long gone. Ben just dipping his way all the way back in towards lobby, aware line. that he might be getting pinched, and it's the right idea. So you know elsewhere to find that first kill, and now Ben just been sitting on the drone. They know what's going on. They hear the beepers. He's holding close to C4 on the wall. Not a bad idea here. Won't find his man. Jigsaw's cut low. But gets it, and Ben just behind him gets what he needs. Doki onto a second. G2 hold on. Benja slips the net once again. Jegs bringing at least one back, but still three players to go through. Yeah, Fnatic certainly fighting their way back into this one a little bit, but with a minute left on the clock, G2 can now think about okay. two players on site, and then they've got a spare man who can roam around. It's likely to be Benja. Those Mozzie Pesh just keeping the drones away from him. The ones positioned inside a site, I think, have largely been found and taken out now. Only five remaining for Fnatic, so they're going to have to start pushing into places oh, where oh, they oh, possibly oh. don't know where everybody is. Uno's just waiting, oh, but how oh, about that? Ah, Jags, he goes around the long way and finds his man with a beauty. So cheeky. I don't know if they had a drone on that. I heard some pings coming on through that might suggest a yellow ping was being dropped on his feet. But either way, just really good heads up play from Jags to even things out. Problem is, Tim, there's only 20 seconds to go. They've been sat around these drones now hoping for the very best. One crouches, one goes high. But Benja's up nice and close. And sat behind the keeper barrier. He surely shouldn't give this one away. Jags hits the deck. Doki for the close. G2 with two rounds on a bounce. Bring us all square at three apiece. Yeah, Benja's done a great job both rounds from that position. Playing on the quad wall just making it difficult for them to come in through that door fighting either side of himself if needs be he did a good job in that round as well holding on to tellers for as long as he did in between tellers archives just great play from benja impressive stuff and it's really kept g2 in it those two rounds back to back at the end of the half there it's a good time for them to get a bit of momentum before they switch on to the attack uh, but i can't wait to see Fnatic on the defense yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting how the rest of this game plays out. I love how I've now got that. Literally does look like a shrine on the wall. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting seeing how the second half plays out because I look back at Six Invitational where we saw teams being really successful, especially our final top six, which G2 were in, was the capability to attack incredibly well during that defensive meta. So one thing to be very mindful of here is G2 are absolutely not a slouching team when it comes to attacking, especially a map like Bank when there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of things that you can do. So just keep a very, very close eye on the second half. Oh, yeah. Painful as it sounds, I wouldn't be shocked to see G2 run away with two or three rounds on the bounce here. Five seconds to go. Dorkit is going to bring the Deimos. Um, so, as I said, Attackers not too much of a surprise. Great gun in, um, in the hands of Deimos. And, of course, a very useful ability as well, um, depending who has been spotted out. Um, you can see they've just got two at the minute. They've got the Valkyrie and the Castle. And that's going to allow him to keep make life going. a little bit more difficult for Jigsaw or Tyrant. It depends whereabouts they are in the map. I think Jigsaw on the Valkyrie is likely to find himself back in towards site. Tyrant just going to be playing in the elevators. So, again, could be a good pick up there because if he does the scan, knows where he is, and it's going to prevent that surprise when they try to maybe play top marble or anywhere else. For me, I'm just looking at this and thinking, he's token the Deimos because his army's been nerfed. <laughs> when I think back to like the old days, obviously there are different sides of the map, but his army used to be his go-to that they always talk about. Could this be the start of his villain art playing on the Deimos and that being his new go-to? Because to be honest, you think about Doki being one of the entry players that we always think about. Yeah, he's the kind of guy who would love picking up an operator like this where you can go on and do your own thing, where you will get given that information, but it does require, I think, to use it at a pro level. A, l a lot of strength when it comes around to communication. You're the only player on your team that gets those pings as Deimos that can then feed that information to the rest of your team, and they've got to assist you in being able to capitalize on that and not get caught up by players on the journey through. The Jegs team. finding out the Uno, though, and the hard thing there is, Tim, that's the hard breach you're taking offline. Yeah, beautiful opener there. You don't get to pick those, but as you say, it's worked out perfectly. Doki does know that somebody's playing down here. I think Tyrant is going to drop away because I think there likely was a Deimos scan at a point there. Doki just choosing to go full on with the Vendetta here, not even switching to the rifle. It could be 
but he's just come out of the hunt and that is why but for the time being he needs to be careful because jigsaw's spotting him out and fanatic have got a great information game here they were aware of uno above them they know what's going on on marble and with a minute left to go and no hard breach isn't it going to be easy for g2 no and he's talking about him running around with the pistol i mean a couple of shots to the body you are laughing with that gun might bring a rifle and spray 20 bullets when one will be enough. At least that's what he's trying to look for here. Defec trying to play a bit of a, a bit of an inspiration to what we saw coming out of Virtue back in that first half. Just trying to hold the blue as best as he can. He's got these trying to run through juice at the wrong time to bring out a keeper barrier. Won't find anyone. Benger making it a double in the round. Going strong in this game, by the way. Nine and four. Defec doing what he can. He's battling on hard. It's him versus the Maverick and he loses out. Yeah, he had to fight that there. He knew that his days were numbered, so exactly. just look to get up in their faces, take the fight to them, get a couple of kills. But 20 seconds left to go. G2 are looking pretty good at this point. We're going to see this auto canister come out, though. Interesting choice to prevent that diffuser going down. It's not necessarily directly going to prevent it, but it is going to stop them getting into sight too aggressively. Benjamin manages to pick up Jags. Eight seconds left to go. Leon's fighting, picks up one onto Virtue. He's going to need three more, though. He's cut down from multiple angles. Benjamin Benja finds the final kill, but that was a good attack from G2, particularly in that final minute. They did really good to mount the pressure onto Fnatic. And like I said, Tim, this is where I start to worry because G2 are no slouch of an attacking team. And I'm just starting to fear at this point, even though it's only been one round, that that was a pretty bloody good attack coming out. And if it keeps on building up this way, I worry that Fnatic will really struggle to fight their way back into things. At least for that attack to begin with, you know, <clears throat> we saw a little bit of would-be aggression coming out of Fnatic, but it was a little bit isolated. It was a little bit kind of pocketed all to itself. And that meant G2 never really had too much concern when it came to taking over large parts of the map. Two or three players all committing towards the square tape, for example, to secure server side. Really good and easy stuff. And Oki looks perfectly comfortable trying to tackle onto Marble. Just nothing enough to really stand up before them. So now what I want to see out of Fnatic is either what we saw out of G2, Really digging deep. Get things like the Goyle online. Get things like the smoke. Let's have some C4s on the table as well. Really go for it heavy than we saw in that previous round. Or look to commit out to the Rome where we had G2 out with four players playing around the map. That's the kind of stuff I'd like to look for here and see if they can get up in G2's faces a little bit more and disrupt them. And sure enough, Doki once again is back on that day mask. I think it's his new main team. Yeah, I think, um, like I say, great gun, uh, you know, useful ability. Yeah, okay. There's just plenty going for it. Um, you know, imagine without the, the nade changes that we saw recently, <laughs> two nades in his hand as well, you know, on the old school style nades. That would be an absolute nightmare. But uh, no, I think he falls into a nice area um, in terms of, you know, it's certainly manageable, gives his own position away. So there is a negative to the gadget as well. Tyrant is going to get spotted out there. Need to be careful. Dork is going straight in for him and he's going to find his man, Ben. Onto Leon, what a beautiful view we've just had of that process from Dorky. Finding Tyrant for an easy kill. He's also going to find more now. Tim has got himself down into the basement. Got to try and claim a victim elsewhere around the map, but he's very much going to be, I imagine, off by himself here, trying to find whatever he possibly can. We've got Jegs set inside of sight here, playing on the Azami. Of course, that's the ability to put up slightly more dynamic defenses here, but he's being drawn from every which way. He's in the spook and out he's gone. Here comes Loki. Well, you can see that hunt coming in for the Deimos at the same time. Rounds himself on the corner. Not quite there, mate. He's inside of admin. Really locking himself away, but Doki is determined to get rid of this target. Doki absolutely desperately chasing down he's his man gone. there. So much so that he's going to run through the cap can traps. Leon picking up a kill, but Uno, he's getting the plant down. There's no way that Jags can do anything about it. He's just waiting for him to come back across his line of sight, but no, he dips down below the desk. Uno not going to overexpose himself, and he's going to give himself an opportunity to win the fight, which he does, and G2 take another round. Don't they just one of those again? I just think on the attacking side, they are going to be really hard to bring down. That one, that's like, I wouldn't say it was solely on Doki there as well in the spot of playing on the Deimos, but just the information that he feeds over to his team. You could see that immediately the hunt came in and straight away, Jegs was out of there, straight back in towards admin office, looking to hide himself away. And it kind of worked because Doki got himself baited into the cap can traps and went down to those. The problem is, is it's taken the Azami out of playing in the middle of site where you want her to be, to be able to put down these more dynamic defenses. He was essentially running for his life and that gave up a lot of control and a lot of room to G2. So making really good use of the information that comes out of the Deimos there to not let themselves get punished. And it's just, again, really difficult to deal with. Fascinating, um, you know, fascinating element to the Deimos there. Obviously we've spoken uh, 
Yeah, quite a bit about it, Dame, also over the last couple of rounds, but just showing there that, you know, that information in... I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say in the wrong hands, but I'm not suggesting Doki's in the wrong hands. I'll go on to, to clarify the context of that. A player like Doki, who's desperately chasing kills, that's what he's interested in. That's what he's good at doing. You hear a barricade getting knocked out, he's going to run towards it. That type of player. You give him a location like that and put him on, on a chase, on a hunt... And there's a little bit of tunnel vision maybe creeping in there where Bangy goes through the cap can traps. They've not been picked up. And, you know, maybe it's too much focus then gets drawn onto that one player. So it's just, again, an interesting little um, element that needs to be managed with that operator. Real mind games coming through on the day. Yeah. Are you the hunter or are you being hunted, right? Love to see it. So we're going to have a little bit of a technical pause. Um, we've just got a bit of a rehost issue. So we'll get everybody back into the lobby. Um, we can see, I think, um, from Dorky's screen, we could see that a few of G2 had loaded back in. So as soon as we've got everybody, we will be getting back underway. But what a matchup that we're having here. It's been back and forward. G2 started strong. Fnatic came back at them. But now G2 in the driving seat. It's been, uh, been one to watch so far. It has. It really has. And remarked on this earlier on that again it just feels right having these two orgs in particular like really going to to war to battle with each other at a time like this in europe just when things are getting started as well as maybe the key thing to note there too we always said that having these big orgs face off on what could be a real big deciding game towards the back end of the stage always feels a bit like ah why is this happening on day one but you'll take it because it has been very entertaining so far yeah it absolutely has at the end of the day you know like you say, everybody's got to play everybody. You know, matchups are going to come when they're going to come. Um, and we are certainly able to enjoy this. And it really gets us going with a bang, doesn't it? You know, we had a great match um, in match two. If you didn't see that, certainly worth a watch back after the play day has finished. ITB versus Wolves. Um, I won't spoil the outcome for you if you haven't seen it, but it was a fantastic one um, and certainly worth a look. And then we're just following it up with another absolute cracker here. I'm just, there's a bit of me kind of hoping that we get a little bit of a fanatic resurgence here. I don't know how much the technical pause is going to play into that G2. We're sort of playing with a bit of momentum there. You saw it on Dorky, you know, getting aggressive, getting chasing people down, maybe a little bit of time out, and it might just help Fnatic steady the ship a little bit. I think they're going to find themselves too bothered. I think one thing I've got to raise though, Tim, the music that we've had across the broadcast so far since the start of everything last week has been great. Very frequently, I find myself just sat there like, this is a bop. It's the same in Japan. It's here now, real nice chill vibes in the background too. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, really enjoying the playlists that we've had. Um, let me say, both Japan and the UL delivering, um, giving us a little bit. You know, of... I think you'd be really good at it as a real, an alternative life, Tim. You'd be a brilliant, like, Ibiza DJ, I reckon. <laughs> Do you think? I could just see, like, DJ Pyrite up there now. I don't really that's like nice I don't really like crowds of people uh, on the yeah, that's, that's, so. that's why you get up on the behind the decks because they're all really far away from well, you. Well, I, I guess I say that, but then again, I absolutely love the events that we have. So exactly, and you're a casting. Like, I think maybe I was there only a few desk, times mate. a year, so that's why I enjoy it so much. Like week in week, maybe I'd have to be. I'd maybe just do a few sets a year, and maybe we'd be fine. <laughs> I'll tell you, mate. Like this event, we'll try and get you some DJ decks. Pop them on the desk in front of us. And we'll just pause mid-game and we'll go into a set of DJ Pyrite. It'll be great. DJ Pyrite. What a time. We are back into game, though. That's a little bit of fun. Done. Into round nine. A very critical round, as you often say, Tim. A five and three that's going to either go up to six and three or five and four. That will not surprise you. Matters isn't too hard. But the key difference in that is it's three rounds for that losing team to climb from match point as well. It's so hard to come back from it. Five and four, though, you're in with a real good chance of breaking a little bit of momentum, keeping things nice and tight, and things start to get a lot harder for that winning team. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, it really is a, a big, big difference in those two scores. Um, so we'll see. But like I say, it's an important round for Fnatic. I feel like they need to stop the momentum um, of G2. And honestly, I think it might just be the perfect time to pull out a Monty pick as well. We've got Alamo bringing the shield along. Um, mm. And if he can use that effectively, it's just going to make it so much more difficult for Fnatic to actually hold on. We did touch upon this when we were in the operator bands and we saw that Capital come first. I was like, will we see a Monty ban? You know, Alamo's the kind of guy to bring it out. Sure enough, here it is. Let's see just how much time he's been putting into getting really acclimated with the new changes. A camera from Tyra is going to see him work, working his way up these stairs. They're very, very aware now that a shield is bearing down on them. And the question that always comes with the Monty is where are the guns supporting him? Are they behind him? Have they got a cross angle set up? Are they on the rappel at the far windows? 
so many options, but you just know as soon as he's got eyes on you, that is being communicated to G2, and they are no slouches at making plays off the back of it. And so it turns out, Tim, it was a cross angle from Uno on those lobby windows. I could be wrong. I, I do still feel like a lot of the players that we've seen using the Monty are still sort of in the habit of turning the body to change where they're looking. Obviously, you know, that new change of the POV, you can hold down your mouse button and you can actually just move your POV, keep your shield point in the same way. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, it's maybe just me or maybe they're doing it for a purpose, you know, shift towards elevators in case there's somebody there. Um, so it could definitely be both ways. I just don't recall seeing too many people actually really use that extensively yet. At least not yet. I think probably in their spot, they're like, you know, we don't need to look anywhere except forward right now. <laughs> we see the players in front of us. The Tyrant's out the window, but holds on a little bit too long with the pea shooter. Does manage to get rid of Benja. Uno, though, was immediately there and ready for the trade. So one for one, that works in favor of Fnatic here. Again, taking an attack off the board early on is never a bad thing. And most critically, it's Benja, who was 13 and 4. Yeah, that's absolutely fine um, from Fnatic's point of view. You know if you're going out of those windows, there's probably a Claymore waiting for you, or if not, somebody's going to shoot you. It's such a long way to get back into the building. You've made a choice. Tyrant knows he's probably going to die there. He's extremely lucky if he doesn't. So, yeah, no problem at all, so long as you get the kill along the way. Um, Virtue on the upside down repel coming through the main skylight. Uh, <laughs> Just looking to, to hang about there and see if he can pick anybody up. They are aware of Deepak down in Tell as Alamo goes in and they've not really got an answer to the Monty either as Leon gets taken down and this could be looking a bit better for G2, but time is the factor, Des. 10 seconds. Which is holding on. They're trying to do what they can here, but I think for now they have just about done enough. And Tim, we spoke about the criticality. You know, that's a word, but apparently it is now of round nine and Fnatic have won it. That brings us up to five and four. Suddenly... You start looking at this and thinking, is overtime inbound? Yep, Fnatic definitely appreciating the uh, criticality of that round, Des. Um, <laughs> is that even a word? I'm pretty sure it's definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> criticality. <laughs> that turns out it actually might be. No, it actually is. Oh, good. No, I'm not having it. You, did, Mate, you had no it. idea. It. It's in Merriam-Webster. You can't question Merriam-Webster, Tim. I'm sure I'm not questioning the fact that it's a word. I'm questioning if uh, your use of it was shaky at best. Have was my word. point. You, you, you were, you, let's be honest, you reached for one there and you got away nah, with it. Nah, nah, come on now. What was that word that always gets me? There's a word that, oh, so um, contestation is a really weird one that there was a caster I used to work with who always said it. And I always used to be like, that's not a word, contestation. Surely you just say contention, right? But contestation, it turns out, actually is a word. Yeah, yeah, specifically. the leg day for that one as well. well out, though, that that's, you know, that's impressive to drop mid-cast is contestation. Like, that's, yeah. um, you know... That's not a bad one this, to fire this, out this, there. This, it's in contestation. It's a moment of criticality, you might say. Bit of rest. Right. <laughs> We're going to get uh, back into things here. Um, Fnatic, yeah, perfect round to win. 5v4 now. But, uh, sorry, 5 4 on the scoreboard. It just puts them right back into things. A little bit of confidence on the defense now. Halts that G2 progress that we've just seen. I think it was four rounds in a row before that. Um, so it was just starting to run away from them a little bit. All of their um, rounds they had on the board have come in two, three, and four um, rounds, respectively. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely um, a good time. They've also then, they can follow it up with server so they can go down to the basement, you know, what's generally considered one of the strongest sites on the map. They've got a real chance to level things up here. And if they do, we're going to see all 12. Whew. I'll take all 12 between these two. Absolute juggernauts wailing on each other. Yeah, give it to me. That thing's setting up here. The castle we've seen a couple of times across the game as well. Three times back in the first half, actually. And this will be the hmm, third time we've seen it in this half, too. So almost, well, more than half the rounds we've seen it picked out. We spoke about it a lot when it first came into... We saw Castle getting four of those uh, castle barricades. Then the ability to put them in the hallway, for example, on border. And we started to see a bit of a castle resurgence there. And now, actually... I think it's in a really good spot where it's not like a must bring, but where teams have got a really cool idea for how they want to, you know, again, re-architect the site or play something a little bit in a unique way. It's a perfect pick for that. So I think actually in a really balanced state at the moment. Justin Joke here using that drop through Skylight onto Marble Stairs a couple of times. Um, a little less direct last uh, uh, this time than last time. It was, you know, almost directly into site last time, but this time he's got to work his way all the way down to basement. Uno doing the job of opening up hatches, and G2 are on a full map clearance here. Doing a good job of it. Subaru is going to slow them down for now, though. 
That's his old goal, right? Try and waste time. A couple of C4s to play behind. Impacts, for example, smokes in back pocket. However, it's really about that two-minute mark where they're now finally dropping away. So if G2 can get a bit of a wiggle on here and give themselves, what, 60 seconds still to play, they'll be absolutely fine when it comes around to the execute. And as I said so many times this half, they are one of those teams, one of the top attacking teams in the world. Was that reminder back at SI? It was only those top few teams that really had an attacking win rate above 50% that saw themselves making a deep run at the tournament. Look, he's going to go for... I thought he was just going to go for a little waddle down the main stairs there, but sends a nade ahead of him that's just going to clear out any utility potentially and dips him back for the time being. What will announce his potential arrival, so instead he's going to move on. He did spot out a Valkyrie camera in here previously, um, but as he moves away, he sees the one on main stairs. So doing a great job of clearing out that utility. One minute ten left to go. Five versus five, and importantly, Deepak still holding on to server. All he's got to do is keep on holding here again. The further down this time runs, the more it starts to stack in Fnatic's advantage. And right now, I mean, G2 aren't even finding themselves poking around server just yet. Deepak still dug inside of this too. As you said, he hasn't been moved out. And I'm nervous at 45 seconds. That's a fair bit of time to play for when you've got three sits around, three smokes to play through in a C4, as I mentioned earlier on. Doing a great job here and wasting enough time. And G2 will be forced to make some mistakes here. Yeah, and especially with the keepers being deployed as well onto the door. Again, it's just that couple of seconds, but it's also that announcement of here we come. Deepak manages to get a big spot. down. He's just going to run away. This could be a really smart play. As with 20 seconds left to go, they can't possibly ignore this, low. surely. Oh, you say that, Tim. I'm sure they'll still try and find a way. Seconds to go. At this point, Jigsaw, you've missed the man. He's in. Doki has slipped Ten the net. Ah! He may be a small Scotsman, but he's done a little bit of damage. Jigsaw correcting for past Five mistakes into go. a two kill for himself. However, it's a three versus three, Tim. Han is going down. Virtue, Bissell and Han, they see what he can try and find, but now he misses his man. They've managed to complete it out. A two versus two. It's really proving to be a battle of equals. Uno hits the deck, and Virtue once again is left in a 1vx two players to bring down and he's been caught out jigsaw brings down his fellow aussie and fanatic bring us all square what a round that was at the end the first time i've ever seen somebody dash their way into dirt tunnel to try and escape the fight virtue um sorry no deepak was unable to make his way back in i thought it could be a struggle for fanatic to kind of deal with that really because you can't necessarily ignore it you've got to at least have somebody watching it if you're going to try and get the diffuser down but they obviously had the man count sufficient inside of servers to be able to do that and still take the fights they needed to on site to get the diffuser down so well played from Fnatic, and that is going to be the round for them. Ooh. Blimey, Charlie. This is proving out to be a little bit naughty of a game, isn't it? A real clutcher there, and that round, that round to bring it all square. Just when it looked like G2 at five and three had it figured out in the second half. Yeah, it started out really strong on the attack, but Fnatic have found their way back into it. Open arrow we go to then in round 11. We get to see at least all 12 rounds of regulation, Tim, and you couldn't have asked much better in the game between these two. No, that's it. I really thought the win would come from Dirt Tunnel last time around, but no, G2 dealt with it well, but Fnatic had the answers nonetheless. Tyrant is going to be up on that top floor. We've already seen one EDD kill um, onto Doki. It was. It was actually Leon who had played the cap can in that round, but Tyrant's going to be bringing it along this time, and we will see whether he gets any similar joy. Doki is not on the Deimos, so shouldn't have the tunnel vision of the hunt, but is on the IQ, so there is absolutely no excuses for any deaths to EDDs this time. <laughs> So you say that. You say that. I've seen Doki nade his teammates off a window before on this exact on this map. Not a window player, I believe Pengu told us at the time. People coming out hoping to find the ram, but simply no joy just yet. Probably one of those boogies rolling in through that top floor, opening up a bunch of stuff on the below. They know that there's someone upstairs trying to challenge onto them, and moving them out is going to be the first challenge for G2 here. The first mini game, the first hurdle the Fnatic put before them. Tarrant is going to drop back down marble, so a little bit of a return to, not quite sight, but to that sort of semi-hold um, of elevators, archives, and tellers that Fnatic are trying to keep a, a grip on. But G2 have done a pretty good job so far of getting themselves into the top floor. Virtue it is this time, bringing along the Deimos. We're going to see the track there. And that's actually pretty smart from Tyrant, I think, all the way down to basement. Good chance that G2 aren't really playing in through there, so it just means he can wait out that scan before returning to Reach site. Deployed. 
Absolutely. All right, starting out with the Castle Barricade being taken off copy here. That phantom pressure we always speak about will open things up and give a bit more of a sight line through to the site itself for G2. I'll find if they choose to play on that angle, otherwise Fnatic will be more than aware of it. It's going to be Tyrant being tracked out here. Not quite had the strongest game himself. Currently sat at two and nine. He can't Setting contend that his team are very firmly in this game. Gonna have those vertical angles being opened up. Soft breach, hard breach. It's all going on at the minute. G2 have got plenty of time as well. One minute 15. Who knows on the drones? They're trying to see exactly what's going on. They're thinking about a plant here. We saw them successfully do so last time they attacked onto this site. It was Uno who got the plant and then got the final kill straight away afterwards. So G2 gonna be hoping for a bit more of that. Jigsaw is in a tough position for them to move though. Just playing on side of the hatch, watching the drop come in has that plant site locked down so it's something that will need to be dealt with well c4 being ripped but not finding a target unfortunately again last round really came down to the bitter end it came down to a scrap and no one has died here with 35 seconds still to play yes the time to dip around the site but they're gonna have to force something and deimos can definitely do that tim in with the pistol of virtue benja in for a second as well they've just ripped fanatic apart out the steams two left standing but a good shot from leon comes on through finds one more coming in for the double door but it's a left right left right from doki and g2 pull themselves ahead tim six and five that was so unfortunate for leon there he got the first one through the the soft surface and then you feel like the recoil just bounced for him and took a couple of bullets away from Doki and allowed him to find that kill as he came on in through double door on a different day Leon maybe gets the kill and Fnatic the round but there's only going to be one team here that get the opportunity to win this in regulation and it's going to be G2 6-5 now and this is a real scrappy affair Des it's exactly what we wanted to see between these two teams they've both had moments of greatness and they are both fighting tooth and nail to take this one. Moments of greatness and moments of weakness at the other side is just so adept at exploiting as well. And I think, again, it's that rivalry that everyone really wants to see brewing. These two orgs bringing it from other esports into Siege as well. The absolute dream from mid G2 really are turning it on in the attack. I know the prior two rounds to that, Fnatic looks like they were really with it and bringing it up towards overtime. They've got to get it right here in round 12 or G2 will take all the prize, the whole lion's share of points and walk away with all three. But Fnatic, at least within a chance to get themselves a single Five point on this left. day, if they still go through to overtime and lose, but they also very easily go on and win it in overtime, Tim. I just love that from Leon there. Like, he takes a gun by, he gets the, the kill through the soft surface, and then he knows he's turning to be challenged from double door, but still has the time and the, the presence of mind to think, I'm just going to take that drone out as I go past. Like, I probably wouldn't see a drone in that situation if it slapped me in the face. Like, you know, you're getting pushed from both sides, hounded on site, picking kills up. Oh, drone, yep. <laughs> Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Just that they're so attuned to it, Tim. I remember like, yeah. um, a couple of times the sim players holding an angle and the pixel changes colour and they just shoot instinctively. Even if it's a teammate, they'll just shoot because they're so honed in on looking for certain things. It's absolutely bonkers. Either way, Deepak at long range here, just holding on and waiting. Knows indeed that we've got the Havana trying to work away up on these windows. It's Uno helping to try and get his castles opened up. i be really careful here, be respectful. In fact, Virtue, no way. Coming in with the backs, the vents in a knock on this map all game long, Tim. It could be the time for him to crack this one wide open. Oh, we don't see a lot of knock at all, but oh! the Prost alarm is going to do its job. Leon shuts him down, Dork. He's there for the trade, though. Four versus four. Benja with a team oh, no. kill. Not now, Benja, not now. Jigsaw manages to find Dorky, but G2, they keep on fighting. Uno onto Deepak, can they finish it here and now, Des? It's been an absolute bloodbath in the middle of the round, and Uno, he's going big. This is just what they need right here, right now. Uno to be the man of the moment and step up. Benja at least has got square covered off and he's watching down through Janitor. All he's got to do is cover his teammate as he goes in for the plant here. There is a C4 available and there it is. Tyrant's in below. Will he find his man? Yes, he will. Down he goes and it's all on Benja. If anyone's going to clutch him, it's going to be him. Yeah, he's just in the feet through the drone hole so he knows where at least one is. Going to make a grab for the diffuser. There is the possibility that he could get this down here. He's to take out the bulletproof campus. The challengers, they start raining on him. There's still a minute. There's an age for anybody to try and hold on here, for anybody to try and get something done. Benja, is he going to stick this or is he just baiting them in? You know, that's what they're waiting to find out. But no, Benja, he gets away with it. He looks for the fight. He gets one, but won't get the second. Tyrant with the kill. And we're going to overtime, Des.
Just what you want to hear on day one. And in this fixture as well, it's the absolute dream. I said it earlier, Tyrant might have been having a bit of a stinky game so far, but you win out a 1v1 like that. That's all you need from him. Three more rounds, potentially, of absolute madness between these two. Oh, I could watch your best of three of this, Tim. Best of five, best of seven. We could just get him playing all night. Yes, this is absolute pure entertainment loving what we are seeing so we're going to go to overtime it's essentially going to come down to the best of three rounds i'm not sure who is on which site but it's not going to matter too much because it's been a three three split either way so there is very little advantage to be found between either of these two teams they are both locked in that is for sure they're both trying to deliver but how costly could that team kill become just whew. that C4 was it. You just, I just looked to the left and saw, oh, there's a C4 in Tyrant's back pocket. Where is Tyrant? Shock horror. Right. The camera cuts to him, and there he is below looking for the denial. Really well played closing round and sequence there for Fnatic, even though they didn't have control of the site or tons of information on what was happening inside of the site itself. We're going to see that same site repeated there, clearly quite confident in their abilities to get things done up here on the top floor. G2, we're going to have another swing at this one. The Monty coming along in this round. Doki, though, is back over onto that Deimos. Yeah, we've seen Deimos change hands a little bit, but as you say, it will be Doki bringing it along this time. No cap can on the other side, so not too much for him to worry about there, um, but they will need to be cautious of those Valkyrie cameras because no IQ being brought along this time. Alamo is going to get straight into the main lobby and he's going to be looking to push up those spiral gold stairs. It is the place to be, as we've seen him in the previous couple of rounds when he played this. He tried to work his way up and through and is doing just that once again supported by virtue playing in behind him again i think it was uno last time around playing in that kind of position but just enough that when you've got the monty up there again you always want to be aware of the guns that are supporting him on his march through the map the intel gathering goal that he's got for his team taking it nice and slow as well and it's a rush it up just yet still got two minutes to play and there you go tim the free looks been used happy i am exceedingly happy now um seeing it brought into action as i say it was probably to be fair just where he was checking specifically previously it just brought to mind that i hadn't seen too much of it tyrant is going to be out on the marble stairs then just looking to maybe hold that line of sight but not much that he can do against the monty of course until alamo has to turn his attention elsewhere doki is going to be moving up we did see him just having a track on somebody um, but for the time being he's not able to get into a position to maybe just uh, make immediate use of that information ah. Venger however does use some information to find Tyrant beautiful headshot there Leon going to make the challenge is he going to get caught out no because Venger he's away and gone he's finding more kills and this time it's Deepak Oh, here we go, sees the head of one more peeking through there, I think I imagine as well, tries to go for the shots. Not going to find Jigsaw though, and Jigsaw wants it. Jigsaw gets it, Tim. A couple of kills fly on through though. G2 are up into a four versus two. Surely we don't let the Aussie coach up big again. Fnatic are uh, showing fantastic resilience in this game so far. A number of times we see them in these 2v4, 2v3 situations, they just keep on fighting. But this shows a great use case for Deimos. When you've got that man advantage, when they're down to just two players, and you can effectively almost take one of them out of it because they're tracked, and you know where they are, and you can go in and challenge them just like that. Virtue taking down Jigsaw. Alamo able to get the plant down, doesn't need to, as Virtue makes it two in the closing seconds closes out the round and it's going to be g2 having that match point opportunity once again just really great use of the deimos in that round especially tim the track yep. that came through onto tyrant on the valkyrie first and foremost forcing back towards his team but he assumed he was running back towards safety not realizing that they had benja rounding onto them from square and as soon as he sat back in a comfy position around logi and start just thinking you know what all is all good here no one's gonna be able to find me out <laughs> another thing coming benja strikes from the shadows and brings him down so even though that information game isn't really benefiting the deimos as long as the calling is strong and he can say right he's fell back into towards stock here that exact moment that i was on about for ben Jer was just ready and waiting for his man my god does he strike true really dragging g2 through the mid parts of that round and guaranteeing them this opportunity to get things over the line but they've got to win here going into round 14 and tim with how things went earlier on on the downstairs i'm a little bit nervous for them 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, G2 still opted not to bring that electrification of the Kaid that really helped them back in round one. Um, we will see whether the roam is any more yeah, successful for them than it was in round four when they tried it last time around. It didn't really pan out and Fnatic got the win that round. But um, yeah, just a, a, a great example to, to briefly go back to that last round. You know, if you're maybe new to using Deimos, as all of us are, only coming in this season and you're thinking, you know, where's the strengths? Where do I use him? That is a great opportunity you find yourself 3v2, 4v2, you track one of those remaining two players and you pretty much bring it down to a three versus one. Jigsaw on Alibi just tracked out constantly. Information is there. Dork is calling it. He's swinging bending and they're there, Virtue, ready to get the kill. Easy as that. So just really well played from G2 and great use of that new operator. Absolutely. And no doubt more to come from it as time passes by. Tarot wants his real good attacker. swing of the bat now as well. Again, probably more being new supported here for the intel that it provides. So the fact that you can guarantee a one versus one against someone, at least in terms of the information, is absolutely mega. And if you're playing in a more supported position, which you might imagine Tyrant to do here, then it doesn't really matter if you yourself are being tagged. Like, you're miles away in safety, and it's actually your opponent that has got to worry. And sure enough, a scan coming out in a second. Jegs is going to find Alamau. Beautiful stuff to pick out one. And there we go. Azami has been targeted. Yeah, but playing on the hatch, not the end of the world for Doki. If he feels that the pressure's mounting, he can just drop away back to sight, and it's going to give him at least a, a sort of a sense of safety, if not complete safety. He does drop away there. Benja was also... This is the other thing you've got to remember on the flip side. How do you play against Deimos? Well, if you're playing in a two like that, you've got Benja with you. You can potentially bait people in. They're coming for the challenge. They're going to tunnel vision on where you are and might not spot the person that you've got covering you. Um, so much like when you're jackal tracked and you can and a lure people in um, is another option. We do have a couple of kills that go in along the way. Um, G2 did level things up, but a big double from Leon is going to push us towards that 15th round as he just starts creating a little bit of space for Fnatic. A little bit of space, a little bit of room. It might just be enough to get them over the line here as well. Finding himself going down here as well. Doki picking him off, finishing at the finish too. Two left foot for G2, mind you, but Benja and Doki, are they those players, Tim? Are they those guys to get this round over the finish line? Tyron and Deepak out here on the west side. Doki up nice and close. Those that they've got all this information on him. He's going to be so mindful because all it's going to take is that one shot to see him going down. And he's playing ring around the ropes. He's trying to run away. It's two left here. Tyron round in the corner. Can't quite find his man. And Doki can't win it. Tim, say nine. We're going all the way to 15, Des. This is exactly what we wanted out of this matchup. And a great, again, great use of that Deimos. 2v1, get the track on and make it really, really difficult for Doki to keep himself off the radar and just go in there and get that final kill. Absolutely spot on from Fnatic. This is what we wanted out of this matchup. We wanted to see as much of this as possible. And they are delivering. Whew. Tactical timeout as well. You don't often see those before round 15. They've usually been used by now because they're yeah. desperate to try and avoid getting to this point, right? But G2 have held on to it all the way through to overtime and they've got really one chance to get this right. And we're feeling that on the attacking side is where they thrive best. And given how their first two attacking rounds went, I'm inclined to agree. But it doesn't mean it's going to be an easy task to get it done. Fnatic really have put on a show so far today. And Tim... I said it earlier on when we saw the games being played out with some of the new players coming in as well. Speaking about like ITP, for example, Team Secret also looking pretty good. Fnatic are back in contention. It's kind of like that whole Ralph Wiggum thing where now you've got G2, BDS, Vols, for example, probably sitting there going, I'm in danger. <laughs> so true. So true. That's it. The time is up then on the tactical timeout. We're going to be getting back into game. G2, Fnatic, both of them have fought their absolute hardest to get this one done. It's been neck and neck all the way. 3-3 three, three half when G2 were on defense. 3-3 three, three half when Fnatic were on defense. And now one round each in overtime. So it comes down to this. Three minutes, round 15. And we will see who comes away with it. It's going to be Fnatic on the defense this time. They are all the way down in the basement. They're in lockers. Leon has brought along the mirror. So they're going to be playing as you would oh, normally man. expect. A bit of a default setup. Although saying that, uh, no, the mirror window is just going to be a little bit deeper. Instead of being on that red corridor where it can be challenged from the hatch, they're going to play it back inside a site. I quite like it as well. Really opened everything up to make it a little bit deeper. And you can get some pretty naughty angles when you're playing things like a smoke. Obviously, no smoke on side here, but 
The risk is garage put... now. That's that's the new risk that that position has. You've got to hold on to garage. And they've not really brought much to deal with that. You know, the shields they can plant down in the doorway, for example. But I think also, like you're alluding to, Tim, they need to make sure they've got a hold on that part of the map. And of course, we're not G to even read into it in the first place. You've got Doki holding his way on the upstairs too, just hoping someone's going to rotate their way at the top floor. He's quite enjoyed these drops throughout most of this uh, game, actually. The, the, the primitive attack. He starts to do a little bit of a Batman through the skylight sort of vibe. Yeah, I feel like maybe that's something, you know, it's become very much a habit for Doki. And it's, I don't know if uh, maybe something Fnatic could have picked up on potentially. They did lose Tyrant to that drop previously. Um, you know, it could easily have been a freebie at some point. You know, I'm sure that the droning has been done to make sure nobody's in position, etc. Doki's not just going to drop it, uh, you know, sort of blind. But uh, he certainly has uh, made a habit of it. So, you know, potentially could have been read in too. But Fnatic are going to be forced back to site pretty quickly here inside of a minute. So G2 making very... Very good progress so far. Yeah, yeah, really getting a bit of a wiggle on here as well. It's the thing I keep on remarking when you see these very defensive setups is the pace at which you can move at. Still got a couple of hatches to work their way through, for example, but largely established that, as you're seeing here, security is cleared out. A couple of hatches are open. They're burning through the Goyo canisters, that one being quite interestingly placed as well inside of admin, just to slow things down that little bit more. While we're also being opened up, so really getting themselves to work here with the combo of the Habana with the Maverick. Here a mirror window being opened there as well. That could be a big one. Um, I'm not sure exactly where that's come from, but of course it's going to prevent um, some of that play. I think it is um, the garage. Yes, it is yeah. the garage mirror that's been opened from the hatch um so again it doesn't matter too much at the minute i think fanatic have still got a presence outside of garage and g2 aren't really looking to push from there it's still going to be coming from server and they've still got the all important hatch there for jegs to play on all right now or never g2 we're into the final 50 seconds and the stall game begins I keep remarking on it the goyo canisters the c4s the tuba the kite everything just layers up together I've got the hatch opened up here with 30 seconds to go, Tim. I think it's drop time. I've watched and enjoyed 14 rounds of this, Des, and it all comes down to this. All the efforts of the players just come down to this sharp point of the game. 25 seconds left to go. Doki, he's looking to go down main. He spots his man. He knows where Leon is. He gets the spray down, and he's going to close him out. Advantage G2, but will time work against him? Who knows him? He's getting the diffuser down. The kills come in, mostly going what? G2's way, but then all of a sudden, Fnatic flip the script. Tyrant and Jags, they find one apiece and bring it back to 2v2 but Uno is able to stick the plant and now starts the game of cat and mouse virtue sends out the flashbang it doesn't do its job though not well enough Jegs goes in but can't find the kill virtue with an essential one is the second gonna be there yes it is g2 are the victors and take the full win against Fnatic. <laughs> not the three points Search the dictionary for that one, Tim. There'll be a word in there. Ooh, it's just too excited. <laughs> Absolutely ludicrous oh. again. Oh. It was a game that deserved it. All 15. It comes down to a two versus two at the very end. And of course, Virtue's going to bring out a clutch when it's needed most. Why wouldn't he, Tim? My glasses are steaming up. That's the level of excitement that we're talking about. <laughs> what a finish oh. that was. Virtue with the double at the end. G2 leaving it to the final 15 seconds. But what a performance. Just for one of those where you know both of these teams are going to be giving it large across the rest of the stage as well. It's going to be a real battle for those top four because I've got no idea who can be going to the major base on these three games. We've still got another one to come as well. So what we'll do is throw it to the desk, get their thoughts on this game before game four. Guys, take it away. Well, we said it was going to be a banger of a game and it did not disappoint. All 15 rounds were needed to determine the victor G2. And you said, Fabian, it was going to be a 7-0. It wasn't quite a 7-0. You know, it doesn't matter what the score is. As long as you win, that's what's the most important. It's the same as if you drop one kill and your team wins, you still did a good job. So all that matters for G2 is that they won. And it, in my eyes, it wasn't even close. I'm going to disagree <laughs> with Fabian. I don't know if that's going to be perfectly obvious. But... G2, of course, won, but it was only a two-point victory yeah. because it was in overtime. And I think the general consensus, you know, at least around this desk, is that we felt that G2 should have got this done in regulation. They did get it done in overtime. So, obviously, they do get the win, but that could be a very... I know it's play day one, but yeah. that could be a very important point drop when you're looking at major spots later down the line. And there's so many good teams now. Like, there are so many competitive teams. I mean, we've seen it so far throughout all of the games that any team can really step up. So I don't think that it's so safe to say which teams will go yet. And it, it's like, obviously, it's the first playlist. So it's never safe to say anything here. But 
we're looking at a much more even league in the overall, yeah. I think, than what we've seen in a very long time. Yeah, I think for G2, I think they looked reasonably sloppy today. I think yeah. as much as they win, we've got to provide the context of G2 probably should have won it in overtime. I think they looked like a team that played a LAN event a week, a week and a half ago, took a break, haven't been able to change anything. They've just had to roll into the stage with what they've got. And I think obviously what they've got is good. They're former world champions for a reason. They've been absolutely, you know, they've been absolutely excellent for such a long period of time that their fundamentals will take them through games as it has today. Uh, but they definitely looked like a team that weren't really getting out of second or third gear. Yeah, they never really did that. If we look at the team they played against with Fnatic, Fnatic had a great game, but G2 were punching all of those yeah. mistakes that a rookie, well, not rookie team, but a team that haven't played together for a long time will make. And it was just continuous, like, small, small mistakes. Like, the one that stood out to me, like, first round immediately, I said to Jack, why didn't they throw Hibana over to the elevator hatch to flash the guy who was standing in there? They knew he was there. Yeah. They even dropped with a shotgun out. You don't drop with a shotgun out if you don't know where the guy is. So we were expecting small, small fixes to turn this around, and we will see a much better Fnatic team in maybe one or two weeks that will have those micros together. You mentioned it as well, right? It's going to be really tight for those top four spots for the mm -hmm. major. Yeah. And of course, we talked about it at the very beginning to put things in perspective. We are still sending the same amount of teams to the major, but we're sending, in comparison to last year where it was two, now three teams to directly to that stage two of the major. So all these teams, of course, want to be there, but with G2, of course, winning this year today with two points puts them up a good perspective. But still, for Fnatic, it really wasn't all that bad from them being so new with yeah. these two pickups. I think if you're a Fnatic fan, you are so much more impressed with this team after one oh, best yeah. of one today, oh, yeah. then the entirety, the entirety of yeah. 2023. I think they showed that they really can compete with the best teams. Thought the good for Fnatic today was genuinely excellent, but I thought the bad was also horrific. So, and I think that's, as you say, that's the symptom of seeing a new team, a team that's not played for six months. That's the rust that kind of has come out. But if they can improve those bads and make them okay rounds rather than bad yeah. rounds, they'll definitely win a lot more games than they'll lose. Yeah, and it's, uh, as we said, they're, they're so fresh together yeah. that all those small mistakes, they will be ironed out. It, it won't be an issue. And playing against a team like G2, where all of those mistakes will be punished, if they go against the, what we consider more middle of the gra or middle of the middle teams, they won't punish all those mistakes. One point today against G2 is great for them. One player that was specifically punishing for that, like in this regard, so we got a sneak peek during the stats, was Benja. An absolutely insane performance. Yeah, I think the thing for Benja is he's definitely a confidence based player. We saw this through, you know, his, his initial run in Six Invitational, right? Where he came in, had confidence, and was the MVP of the event. He then also kind of went through and has struggled at times when his confidence has been low. If you look at the multi land that he most recently played, had a very, very bad time there. Got himself to online play today. He started out like a rocket. He continued like a rocket. And what G2 need to succeed, we highlighted Doki in the pregame of this game about how he's been so consistent. When he's not been that consistent, because Doki had a fairly mid game today, you need somebody to step up. That was absolutely Benja. Ben just sets up for sure. Of course, you mentioned Doki as well. We're standing here because we have an interview planned with Doki. We should be able to get him up very, very soon to ask him a few questions. Good evening. Hi. It is good to see you. I hope you're feeling well after this victory. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. I mean, we talked about it. It was all 15 rounds that you needed to determine the victory today. How does that feel? Uh, it was closer than it should have been. It should have been, I guess. But I also think they played good. To be honest, like they played really good. I thought they had some good defenses. Um, and uh, like when you're playing against this new meta, you don't know. You don't know what the first game is going to be like. So yeah, we just took it and ran with it, and yeah, we won. It was a close game. Could have been better, but I'm still happy with two points. So yeah. So your old best friend is here as well, Jack. I have some questions hello. for you. First hello, of all, Dad. <laughs> hello, son. <laughs> so this short break you guys had between six invitationals into Malta into now. How has yeah. your preparation for this stage looked like? Oh shit! Oh sorry. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> we we haven't had a break. I'm actually knackered. I'm so knackered. Um, it literally feels like I've just been gone for six months and it just hasn't stopped. But I guess that's the life of wannabe world champion. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We haven't had much time at all to prepare for EOL, if I'm being completely honest, and we haven't really. So, um, but I think we are good enough with the things that we already had to be able to get a top four uh, place uh, at the end of it. So I'm not so worried about that. I think the main work's going to come in when we get to the major. So, yeah. Well, you mentioned the new meta, and you mentioned that, you know, you haven't really been trying new things. A few things that you've been adding so far, though, was, of course, Damus. You've been using a lot of Damus, I think, the most so far of any single team that we've seen. How do you feel like he's been helping you? Uh, he's good. Sorry, I just realized I'm so red. 
What's going on? <laughs> um, the whole face is red. It's the lighting, baby. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not actually red. I just get really sunburnt in motor, but that's what it is. Um, Deimos, yeah, I love Deimos. He's just broken. I see people saying that he's not good. I just think he's the best operator possible for our entry fragger. You've got a 90% of the 1v1s you take, you're going to win because you have such a crazy advantage. And it's just, yeah. He has nades and Harvich Gadget. He's just a beast, so... Uh, I think he's really undervalued and I'm surprised teams aren't playing him a lot. And I see people on Twitter saying like he's so useless and he's bad, like they're crazy. So yeah, I love them. Well, maybe they need to take a page out of your book then for uh, for the next maybe few games. But just to make sure maybe that we don't keep you any longer and you can go and prep for your next few games, we'll let you go for uh, for tonight. Thanks so much for speaking to us and we hope to speak to you again. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'll, I'll try and fix the cam for next time. You've been drinking we'll too much it. tomato juice. We've gone over this. It's too much tomato time. juice. Yeah. I stopped the alcohol, Fabian, and I'm on the tomato juice. Wow, like, honestly, <laughs> honestly, an <laughs> applaud to you. It's I am so thanks. proud of you because Thanks. that was an issue. Yeah, that was an uh, issue. That was a massive yeah. issue. <laughs> yeah. All, All right, right I'm going to go grab a beer, so i <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Joki. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, healthy journey is what we're seeing so far with these players. Very, very good. But we have one more game tonight for Europe League, and that is our best of one between Wild and BDS, which will be with us after a break.